Hey, how's it going? This is Evil's Comics. I am Evil Mike, and I have another review for you. This is Heavy Metals Never Never issue number one. It is, uh, let's see, it is written by Mark McCain, arts and inks by Phil Buckingham, colors by Agnes Paza, um, letters by David Withers, editor Peter Duncan, cover Christopher Lair. Um, if I mispronounce anybody's name, I'm sorry, no disrespect. Um, but this was Never Never from Heavy Metal. This is the first ever Heavy Metal that I have ever read. I have known about Heavy Metal. You know, um, it, it has been around since not before I was born, um, 1980, uh, for all those who don't know. But um, I've just never read a Heavy Metal magazine. Now, uh, when I was growing up, it was a magazine. So that's one of the reasons I kind of stayed away. Two is more adult themed. I have seen both movies, Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal 2000. I enjoyed both. Um, I will say the art and everything is out there. If you have not seen them, I mean, they're, they're really short. They're really great. They're, they're kind of like collected uh, short stories that do tell a main story um, overall. Um, but, you know, indies are, are big and crazy, so I'm trying to pick up, you know, something from all publications currently and finding out that Heavy Metal is actually, you know, uh, doing stuff in this in a comic book format. You know, um, I, I'm steadily getting interested in, in looking at everything they have been dropping, and this is the first title that I was big and excited for. Now, if y'all don't know, Never Never uh, came out recently, and it, it, it had a very uh, low print run, and plus that is something that, you know, if you're not in tune with your LCS, uh, they might not even be ordering Heavy Metal Magazine. Um, my main LCS just isn't ordering Heavy Metal, period. I think I've seen Tarna once or twice, and I think the issues they had were like three and four, and that was a book that I would have picked up, but they just didn't order the number one when it came out. Um, I got lucky and found this at my secondary LCS. Uh, big shout out to Shannon. Um, she is not watching my videos, but I love that girl to death. She has hooked me up like on four, five, ten, I don't know how many occasions. Um, I, I, I wish she was single. I don't even know, but uh, man, she, whoo! Um, but she really came through this time. Um, she pulled this out of her box again. This is the second time she hooked me up with Nottingham and Never Never, and she knows I have this channel. Um, but just hasn't maybe she's not a YouTube person and, and and didn't you know care to ask hey what's your YouTube name um, but nonetheless she did help me out the same I did have to buy it but I mean she pulled it out of her own personal collection she didn't have to do that she didn't even read this one so you know big shout out to her but anyways um, this is never never and, and man what an amazing book um, I will say it I was drawn in by the cover now basically it is a very similar to another story I just reviewed if you have not watched that go check out that that is Nottingham and it is a retelling of kind of uh, of Robin Hood and this in similar fashion this is a retelling of Peter Pan um, I think due to licensings and I didn't note this on Nottingham but I think the reason that the sheriff of Nottingham is not you know titled as that because in that story he's the sheriff of you know Sheriff Blackthorn. I think they do that for copyright issues and it's the same with with this um, because Peter Pan is not named uh, Peter Pan in this story. He is Petros. Um, there are a lot of other names they do use like uh, uh, Smith and Smythe. Um, they, they do use um, like they mention uh, they don't mention Captain Hook but they do mention that the main bad guy antagonist of the adults you know has the hook um, the the alligator is there the the um, uh, you know the I hate that term because they were not in that in the story or the but uh, the American Indians the the Aboriginal Indians I don't know what they would be in the story um, but this is a little different I will say first off I, I was in by the you know story that it was like a dark retelling of Peter Pan and I, I'm not I mean a lot of people don't know this but all fairy tales especially from Disney or or, or any kind of older fairy tales they're all dark they, they were all like kind of dark warnings and, and 
nowadays they have just been cast in another light. If you think around the box and just watch some older films like like Peter Pan, for instance, Disney's Peter Pan. I mean, you think about it, it's already kind of a scary tale, right? You're a parent, and your kids are taken from their, their rooms while they're sleeping by this individual that creeps into their bedroom and somehow tricks them into going into this place, Never Never Land. And, um, yeah, they never come back. I mean, there, there's this fantasy tale about how they never grow old and stuff, but in a real sense, you know, that they're, they're gone forever and, and their parents don't know what happened to them. I mean, um, it is a, it is a early, early, early story of child abduction, you know, and, and it was to wise enough parents. Um, and it has become something else over the year. All, all the tales, Snow White, uh, Little Mermaid, um, recently with Frozen. I mean, if you really look at the backstories on where they came from, they're not they're not so nice of the stories that we have now. And I'm not knocking the retelling that we have from Disney and some other classic companies, um, DreamWorks and such. Um, you know, I, I love those just as well. But if you think about them, is that they're still kind of scary. It's just they they paint a different picture. So, anyways, on this, like I said, it's a little different. <clears throat> And we do follow this girl, and it's not Wendy. I'm drawing a blank at her name. Uh, of course, for those of y'all that don't know, I'm horrible with names. It is something with my my memory. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Like, I remember Petros. Um, but it starts out, and this girl is, is somehow in Neverland already. We do see Petros right off the bat, and he is right here where my finger is clicking. Uh, we do see the alligator or crocodile. It should be a crocodile. But, um... She is trapped, and, and they are, they are you know, giving her up as a sacrifice. We get a lot of her past, um, and her name is Maria. Maria uh, Winter, I think it is. And we go, a lot of the story is back and forth with her and how she grew up with her father. Um, he is a military man, and he has a, you know, um, so she has, I mean, he took, a, you know, the father to the utmost degree and he actually showed her a lot of skills and a lot of like hunting stuff a lot of military stuff you know strategy out of the box thinking um, so in my opinion you know he, he he was a very good father in that regard as far as teaching and stuff like that um, they do go into right here the first you know where where Petros comes in the picture with Maria and at, at the time she's kind of going through struggles and they want to put her on medicine type thing and, and um, the dad doesn't really know how to break her out of this this kind of like she's kind of um, it's more like anxiety bipolar type issues and the father is struggling on that that end because he doesn't want to put it through psychiatry or on medication stuff like that um, Pedro comes in kind of tricks her into going off to Never Never Land, you know, saying it'll be a short visit, like a vacation, a getaway, you know, you'll you'll come back a new person kind of thing. And, and that is not the story, you know, because they get there and and uh, they do go into this man, it was exhilarating, flying, and which is over here, and then they pop out over here and bam, they're in Never Never. And uh, right off the bat, he, he's, he's trying to kidnap and capture her and, um, um, they go into what the real never never really is and what it is is uh i mean there's limited resources in never never um like like it states and i mean they do never grow old you know if you come there as a as a grown-up you stay at that age as a child you stay at that age but there's other rules that we're just not thinking about but the uh the never never part you never can die either and they kind of you know this book goes into it and i will say it is there are some graphic parts and there's some parts that i mean if you can't deal with blood it, it it could bother you more so than some of the other books i've reviewed like red room or some other ones um this has a more realistic kind of brutality to it i would say now it's not to say horror it has a horror vibe to it. It's not necessarily scary or anything, but it's it's brutal as far as what the subject matter and what's involved with. Because the lost the lost boys, yeah, they're a bunch of cannibals. I mean, with what resources lacking, and these kids always be there. I mean, they don't show any wildlife in the whole book besides the crocodile. Um, other than that, it just seems like the lost boys kind of like eat each other or other things or something like that. So. In the beginning of the story, they're just kind of like into this whole like 
you know, Wendy does end up escaping. Um, they go into this backstory where, you know, she's struggling in the water. The crocs try to get her. You know, the dad's all like, you know, she's having these flashbacks and he's like, man, just calm and, and relax, you know, which is crazy because there's this gigantic crocodile in the water with her. But um, she does make it out of the water and she's fine. She ends up learning a lot of the rules right here from these two lost boys because uh, she does get a helper that ends up helping her out. And he is one of the Indians, you know, part of the Indian tribe that's on the island of Never Never. Um, this is where it gets a little more graphic, so warning, warning, but like right here, I mean, he, he splits their head open and cuts, you know, another guy's uh, intestines out, and uh, it, they, they don't stop, and same thing over here, because Petros is dealing with uh, pirates that have, you know, found out that the, the Petros and the Lost Boys are out in the open, and so specifically right here where I'm tapping my finger, you know, that, that's Petros taking out some pirates. And just like that, they don't die, you know, so if you get your head cut off, you're kind of stuck like that. They do establish that, that certain wounds can be healed and, and sewn up and stuff like that. And we do, we do see those two lost boys, even though he got the, uh, the cut in the back of his head and the other one got a nice cut there, they, they, they keep going. Um, it was kind of one of the first questions I had going forward is, well, how, uh, how does someone finally get put down permanently type thing? And they do establish that too, that there's multiple ways, but they do show you how fucked up and twisted this Pedro guy is because uh, he has been killing the, the pirates, and I think they're called Redbacks in this story, but he has been killing the Redback pirates for a long time, and, and he's got this little game that he's developed, and he's got, I mean, right here, this is a, you know, at the bottom, this is a wall of, of zombified redback, you know, heads that, that he has collected over the years, and he's basically telling these pirates that he's kidnapped, and, and uh, or they're prisoners, but he's basically telling me, yeah, I'm going to kill all y'all, I'm one of y'all, I'm going to let, let you go so you can run back to Captain Hook, and, and tell them, you know, what's going to happen to you if you keep coming back, and, and basically he just wants a name. And they, the pirates are like, that's all you want? And you'll let one of us go? And he's like, yeah, just a name. And the other pirates on the wall, remember that, I mean, that some of them, I mean, if you, it was, you know, it's kind of small, but some of them do have mouths and some of them don't, you know. I mean, but the ones that have mouths, they do show you, they, they still talk and stuff. And they're trying to tell the pirates, man, don't, don't, don't play his game. Don't, don't, you know, don't, you dumbass, don't, don't tell him anything, you know. And, um, yeah, but, uh, Sadly, one of the pirates does does uh, take the bait, and he gives another pirate, uh, Petros, uh, you know, the name that he wanted, and he kind of tells him what he's going to do with that name, and he says, uh, and I kind of read you a little bit, but he says, uh, but you see, I use that name to identify family, friends, relatives, children, grandchildren, especially grandchildren. Then I go out into the world and fetch them. And I bring him back, and then I make you watch what I'm gonna do with him. Yeah, this guy is fucked up, um, but in a in a really evil way, man. He's a good bad guy. We'll say that. Um, they do show uh, Maria, and I think his this this guy's name is Obo, and it's a O B O is the American Indian's name, and they they they're they're on the run. You know, they're trying to get away. Now we got we got Lost Boys, and and we see that they can fly. Um, and they're flying and they're hunting this girl and they, and they eventually they, they come in this thing where that they're you know like oh they, they kind of think they know where the girl is and the girl's like oh god and and the two uh the, the lost boys they're like uh, um well maybe they're not around and and so they fly off in a different direction obo and maria they take off and uh obo's like yeah we're almost there there's our tribe um a little before backstory, um, but, but Obo is a, uh, a mute. He is, for some reason, his tongue is not there. Um, so he is doing all this, you know, doing uh, hand signals and stuff, and, and she is not as quick to pick up that he is, he is a mute. Um, but he is trying to tell her that, that their village is there, and, and it, she kind of does the 50 questions thing and doesn't realize that he's mute. And in the process, the, the Lost Boys, they kind of. The same two lost boys. They spring their trap, and bam! They, they, you know, they got Obo and and uh, Maria, and, and they they want Maria. She's captured, but Obo, man, they they fuck him up, and then they kind of show you. I mean, they stabbed and head wounds and all kind of stuff. I mean, he's still going. Never, never, right? You can't die, but um, they they could sure as hell like mess you up pretty bad. Um, 
they do uh, show you since they were so quick to the the uh, the Indian tribe here, and that's where he was leading them. That the the Indian tribe does come and, and rescue Maria and and what's left of Obo. Um, one of the the lost boys does bite the dust. Uh, we do see that they are able to be killed, and it's basically like they get chopped up and and set on fire until they're just ashes. Um, one of the other Lost Boys does go back to Petros and basically like, um, and I think the Indian tribe is called the Night Tigers in this story, um, but the Night Tiger tribe, tribe is, is basically getting ready for an attack because, you know, Petros, I mean, he, he sees himself as a god and, he, and, and so far in the story he pretty much is, him and the crocodile. Um, the crocodile is very small only in the beginning and they use him like it's kind of like for sacrifices but I mean Petro he, he's the guy to look out for um, but that is the first issue and what's going forward it looks like we're gonna have some like you know maybe Captain Hook and his and his Redbacks are gonna get mad and go after Petros and churn you know I mean it's got a like a four-way connecting story on where it can go and uh, for a first read it was an A plus read all the hype does go behind this book um, just like Nottingham it is one of those books where it's hard to get so if you can get it you know read it you know um, check it out man I mean it's I'm still uh, I, it's not expensive expensive for me it would be because I think it's beyond LCS prices now and it's probably like eBay um, or Instagram or Facebook or you know what have you but it was a really good read and I'm really looking forward to it um, you know I, it's one of those things where I, I figure it's gonna be like a four or five part series they could extend it out to 12 or something like that you got like four main kind of connecting stories right there but um, I will say this the art on the cover was fantastic but the art inside man I, I off the first page I was like okay I like the art but it's just not what I expected but get past that because I mean, the, the rest of the art in the whole book, and I've shown a lot of the art, it, it's just fantastic. Um, it, it is really well done. It, if I didn't read everybody's name, that is Mark McCain doing the writing. Art was Phil Buckingham. Colors by Agnes Pazio, Paza, Paza. Letters by David Withers. I mean, it was outstanding, and I'm looking forward to getting uh, issue two. Um, but that's my review on Never Never. Um, if you have read this, let me know if you plan to pick it up or if you've already bought it and just haven't read it. You know, what are your expectations? How'd I do on the review? Man, chat me the hell up. I love chats. Um, I love the comments. I love the likes. You know, I suck it all up. Um, I got at least one more review coming and I'm going to leave you all alone for a little bit. Evil out.